what happens to our financial and economic system if we get the 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 level of three percent with inflation? Is that the new two percent? Well, that's not that's not my decision to take. It's a decision of the central banks. Um, Part of the book is based on the fact that when we had the target of 2%, which we still have, uh, this implies fairly low nominal rates on average, and that really limits the ability of the Fed to help the economy if it slows down. You can only decrease the rates by, you say, the nominal rates are 2% or 3%, uh, by 3%. And what we have seen over the last <clears throat> 20 years is that that is not enough for the Fed to actually do the job, or the ECB or whoever, any central bank. And so I have argued that it might be better to actually run the economy on average at 3%, which would imply higher rates, which would give more room for monetary policy, uh, and would make some of the issues in my book less relevant, because if monetary policy can do most of the job, it should do most of the job. Uh, if it cannot, then fiscal policy right. has to come in, which is uh, the title of uh, of. Olivia, uh, and, and this, Lisa, is so profound. Professor Blanchard at IMF with Stiglitz talked about 4%, and that was hugely controversial in 08 and 09. And this is a bit of a different discussion, as you and I have heard from his colleague at Peterson, Adam Posen. Right, this question of do you let it run hot? But on the flip side, and Olivia Blanchard, the title of your book, Fiscal Policy Under Low Interest Rates, Fiscal Policy of Trying to Fuel Growth When Monetary Policy Didn't Have Room to Do So, does it get flipped on its head, especially after fiscal policy created the problem that monetary policy is now trying to address. So, I, as, as you may know, uh, fiscal policy can do too much. And I think that we're paying, in large part, a major fiscal policy mistake. Uh, there was no need for the very large programs that we saw in 2020, but more especially at the beginning of 2021, which led to a very large overheat of the U.S. economy uh, and uh, supply chain disruptions, which would have been there, but were probably aggravated by it. And uh, in general, overheating in the world. So yes, I mean, there's such a thing as using fiscal policy too much. I had a sense that although I was arguing for using fiscal policy, uh, the uh, Biden administration in particular was probably doing two, two times or three times what I would have liked. And the result has been indeed there are some other reasons, and clearly Ukraine has been very high inflation, and the Fed has had to react the other way uh, with, with, with very high interest rates or relatively high interest rates. Uh, I think that's a phase. I think that the book is really written looking beyond uh, the current inflation episode, the current higher rate episode. And one of the theses of, of the book is that we're probably going to return to an environment in which the rate that the central banks need to choose in order to get the economy at potential is going to be very low again. So we are again going to be in this situation in which there might be constraints on the monetary policy and fiscal policy has to do more. But the point is clearly at this stage, the discussion is very much about the high rates. So there's a bit of a provocation in coming with <laughs> coming out with a book with a, the title of it is Low Rate. Uh, but I would argue that first they are not terribly high, they are surprisingly low at the height of a battle yeah. against inflation. Uh, and, and there is no reason to think that they will not go back to something like we had before COVID. So then where does that leave the Federal Reserve, the ECB, in terms of the balance of risks? Is it to go too far with benchmark rates and hold them there to, for too long now? Or is it to not do enough, given that we are going back to perhaps something that is slightly different than what we experienced over the past several decades? So I think that with respect to the inflation process, uh, you know, I'm, I'm slightly older than you are. And so I've seen it before. And it seems to me, and maybe Tom is in between us, it's my guess. Uh, <laughs> it, it, it seems to me that I have seen it before, and the issues are always the same, which is, well, inflation is too high. Part of it is going to go away because part of it is due to energy prices, food prices, and these are going to decline. They have started declining. But, you know, we still yeah. have to basically slow down the economy a bit, and we don't know how resilient the economy is, right? In the textbook, or in the simplified stories you hear on the radio, you know, you basically increase the interest rate and the economy just slows down. But you don't know how easily you get to that. Right. So I think that's what the Fed, right. the ECB, and all central banks are facing, which is, should we do more, should we do less? And then 
there are two issues, if, I, if, if you give me two minutes more. The, the first one is that there are what we call lags, right? Which is that even if it works, it doesn't work right away. And so you have to kind of stop tightening or going easy before you actually have seen the results because the results right. take six months or a year, right? And then the other aspect, which I think is relevant in this case, is that some of the factors which increased inflation turn around on their own, independent of the Fed, independent of the ECB. Right. So energy prices go down. And there is what I've called a, a false dawn, which is inflation falls, and it is falling now, you know, month to month. The numbers are very, very good. And some people say, okay, we're done. Okay. Please stop. Olivia, you know? I got, that, that is I, not right. I got one minute left. Olivia, I'm going to rip Sorry. up the script here. I got Alan Blinder writing in the Wall Street Journal that disinflation is intact. Krugman's been pounding the table on this for months. You know the history of 47, 49 into the Eisenhower uh, deflation that we saw in 52. I'm not that old, come. You, you just, <laughs> thank you. But Robert Solo is who you dedicated your book to at 98 years old. Do we yes. have any in, clue in, what... In great shape. Do we have any clue what we're doing, Olivier, given disinflation in place amid technology? Solo, the laureate Paul Romer, the should-be laureate Olivier Blanchard. Do we have a clue where we are given the technological progress that Solo invented? Yeah, I think I think we do, but there's uncertainty. Uh, I think there's the usual amount of uncertainty, which is, yeah, the economy is always changing, so you have to take this into account account, the response to interest rates changes as technology changes and so on. I think for the moment, we're roughly where we should be. It looks like we have it probably more or less under control. The really difficult issue, uh, Tom, is what is the unemployment rate that we can sustain? Can yeah. we basically get inflation down all the way to 3.5 as it is now and keep it there? Or do we have to accept slightly higher unemployment in order to stabilize inflation. And I think that's the big issue. That's where all kinds of technological well, issues come up, uh, matching, reallocation, all kinds of things like that. 